Your network sponsors are John Deere, where you'll find big savings on lawn and garden equipment right now at your participating John Deere dealer. Country Companies Insurance and the nearly 1,000 Country Companies agents located throughout the state of Illinois. And DeKalb Pfizer Genetics, with more than 1,100 dealers in the state supplying Illinois farmers with a full line of quality seed products. This is the Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana, and we're live on Final Four Day as we present the 1983 Boys Class AA Illinois State Basketball Championship. And now, there are four. In game one today, favored Chicago Marshall takes on super quick Peoria Central, and then strong Thornton of Harvey hits head-on with Springfield Lanfear, with the winners playing for the big prize tonight. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and we welcome you to semifinal day of the Class AA tournament. In game one, we have two lightning quick teams, Peoria and Marshall, with both having won 27 games. In game two, two very strong teams with 28 wins apiece. We remind you that in 1977, the final game was played between Peoria Central and Springfield Lanthier. Will that happen again? Certainly, Harvey of Thornton and Marshall will have a lot to say about that. For more on our first semifinal game, let's go to the bench with Art Kimball and Coach Ron Nikovich. Thank you very much, Frank Lasoni. And Ron, good morning to you. Good morning, Art. Good to be here again. Should be a great semifinal session. Let's just get right into it on this uh, Peoria Central Marshall game and spotlight a couple of young men, a couple of the small guys who make things uh, go. First, uh, Tony Weisinger from uh, Peoria Central. What's your reaction to Weisinger? Tony Weisinger, I think, came into the tournament relatively an unknown quantity here, but uh, after his 13 points and five assists and five steals and five for five from the free throw line and superb quickness, why he lit up the assembly hall fast. He's going to be a big factor. Uh, yesterday scored 13 points. And on the Marshall side, of course, the Valley who goes to their six foot three inch standout, Joe Stephan. But the fact remains, Michael Doughty is one of the young men who really makes it go. A five foot ten inch, 145 pound. Uh, senior with a 17-point average. There's Dowdy. Ron, how do you feel about this young man? Well, Dowdy, again, is, uh, fits that mold, that kind of player who came down here without the reputation that Joe Stiffen had, but he's a, he's a coach's player, as there are many of these players who are coach's players down here. We recognize the uh, blue-collar kinds of things that they do and the contribution that they make to their team. We're down to four teams, and uh, again, there's really no odds-on favorite for the state championship. And a reminder, one of your network sponsors is DeKalb, the Pfizer Genetics. Farming is a tough way to make a living. Most farmers are in a struggle just to survive. I know I sure am. So when I come asking you to plant DeKalb Pfizer genetic seed, you better believe it'll be the same seed that's done the job on my own farm. It's my job to know what kind of seed you need. Not because I'm a seed dealer, because I'm a farmer like you. Who's in the struggle with you? I am. Wobble, 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 boing, boing, boing. Don't worry, call the car man. When you need shock absorbers, come see us. We carry the ones you need. Install them while you wait and guarantee them for as long as you own your car. The same is true for McPherson struts. Hey, Jimmy, show them one of our struts. Wobble, 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 boing, boing, boing. Don't worry, call the car man. hit head on here in the first semifinal game both having won 27 games and Ron Nikovich they both feature quickness the maturity edge goes to Chicago Marshall I think maybe uh, maybe a slight edge on quickness to the Lions I would say that you're correct on that Peoria of course is the quickest team I've seen all year and I thought that we ran into some quick teams but this team really can jet it out what with the three guard talks that they play and of course Ivan Stone their center is just an outstanding player the kind of player that plays with such composure all game long and again one of the unsung kind of players in the tournament is Lamont Hanson who did so well in yesterday's game yesterday the Peoria Central Lions faced a man-to-man -man defense game long from St. Joe Westchester they won't see a zone of uh, a man-to-man -man today and I wonder how they'll react against the zone well I think they probably have encountered zones all season long like all of us have and I think I think one thing about the Final Four is that it will feature zone defense throughout and quickness throughout. I think that's probably among the Final Four. Okay, well, we're ready now to go to the floor with one of the coaches for today's game, and here's Art Kimball. Thank you, Frank. We're with Luther Bedford, the head basketball coach at Marshall. Luther, first congratulations on getting here. Thank you very much. 
What do you What do you anticipate today? You're playing a very quick ball club in Peoria Central. Uh, yes, they are super quick. We haven't played anyone as a team as quick as they are, and uh, we'll try to slow them down with a half court press and a zone. You're not exactly a slow ball club yourself. This thing could get into a pretty good transition battle. It may get into that. Uh, hopefully that uh, we can get back on defense because they can really run. We'll be doing the same thing. Joe Stephan healthy today? Joe is feeling fine. Okay, Luther, best wishes to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Luther Bedford, the head basketball coach at Chicago Marshall, and uh, now Chuck Fisher, the head man of Peoria Central. Chuck, Marshall Commandos in Peoria Central, two schools with a lot of tradition. You're right, Art, and uh, it's going to be a tough ball game. Marshall is a very manly, tough team out of the city of Chicago with very good players, and we expect a tough game for sure. Do you expect an up-tempo battle here? Yeah, I would say so. I think both teams have great quickness. They're going to try the way, try to play the way they have all year. Your youngsters played so extremely well yesterday. You had to be tremendously pleased. Yeah, I'm very proud of that. It seemed like we got better as the game went along, so it was very exciting. Chuck, good luck to you, and best wishes to you. Congratulations. Thanks, Art. Chuck Fisher, the head coach at Peoria Central, and now back to Frank Bassoni. Thank you very much, Art. The Lions defeated Ottawa in the Super 55-48 to to get here. And then, of course, they had their win over St. Joseph Westchester, 71-60 yesterday. They are from Peoria County in the Mid-State 8. The Chicago Marshall Commandos won in two overtimes in the Super Sectional over Collins, 67-62. And then they took, took out Elgin in the quarterfinal game. The horn sounds, and the teams are coming over to the sideline where... We will be ready now for the introduction of the coaches and the players for this first semifinal game. It will be preceded, however, by the uh, color guard and the national anthem. Here's Tom Trent. Ladies and gentlemen, after the presentation of the colors by the MacArthur High School color guard, we ask that you stand and join the soloist William Olson of the University of Illinois in the singing of our national anthem as is played by the MacArthur High School pet band. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and the bright stars through the perilous fight for the rampart we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare of unbursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there who paid us that star-spangled We have ourselves a matchup of two very quick teams. We pointed out the leading scorer for the Lions is silky smooth Ivan Stone. The leading scorer for the Commandos is super powerful Joe Stiffen. The contrasting styles both on the inside. Now let's go back to Tom Trent. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the coaches and players involved in our first semifinal round game of the day. First for the Lions of Peoria High School with a record of 27 wins, only three losses. The head coach of the Lions, Chuck Fisher. Number 12, Dennis Brocknax. Number 20, Rich Heller. Number 22, Chuck Edmonds. Number 32, Ricky Thomas. Number 42, Bob Donaldson. Number 50, Tony Foote. Number 52, John Offutt. And now 
now the starting lineup for the Peoria Lions. At forward, a senior, 5'10", number 24, Tim Williams. Tim Williams, a very valuable performer, averaging 7.1. At forward, a senior, 6'5", number 34, Ivan Stone. Stone hammered in 28 points in the quarterfinals. Starting at center for the Lions, a senior, 6'3", number 40, Lamont Hansen. He plays bigger than that around the basket, averaging 12 a game. At a guard, a senior, 5'6 and a half, number 10, Steve Harvey. He puts the go-go in the Lions. Steve Harvey, the quarterback. And a guard for the Lions, a senior, 5'10 and a half, number 14, Tony Weisinger. Weisinger, the best outside threat, shot in 13 against St. Joe Westchester. The Lions of Peoria Central. <laughs> now we'll take a listen to the lineup from and Marshall. Now let's meet the commandos of Marshall High School who enter the game with a record of 27 wins, four losses. The head coach at Marshall High School, Luther Bedford. Number 10, Jerome Dowdy. Number 12, Zachary Miller. Number 30, James Scott. Number 33, Stanley Frazier. Number 34, Edward Jones. Number 41, Joseph Young. Number 43, Martin Kofer. And now the starting lineup for the Marshall Commandos. At forward, a senior, 6'2", number 31, Kenneth Mixon. Averages 13 points per outing. At forward, a senior, 6'4", number 32, Kevin Rice. Rice shoots at 57% and 15 a game. Starting in center for the Commandos, a senior, 6'3", number 44, Joe Stiffen. A great leaper with 20 against Elgin in the quarterfinals. At guard, a senior, 5'10", number 22, Michael Dowdy. Dowdy carries a gaudy 17-point-a-game average. And at guard for the Commandos, a senior, 6 feet tall, number 21, Anthony Upshaw. Here's a co-captain and the leader, 6.7 points per outing. The commandos of Chicago Marshall. The officials for the semifinal game are Marvin Carlson of Lombard and Jim Went of the Grange. We'll have the tip-off of game one in the semis. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. Peoria in the Mid-State 8, in Peoria County in Central Illinois, Marshall of Cook County, the Chicago Public League, of course, the big city of Chicago. The lineups to start for the Commandos, Mixon and Rice, the big shoulders of Joe Stiffen in the middle, Dowdy and Upshaw at the guards, the Lions have Williams and Stone at the forwards, Hanson in the middle, Harvey and Weisinger, the gunslingers outside, the maroon it colored Lions, the white clad Commandos, quarterfinal game number one, Marshall starts with the ball, Mixon is 31, Stiffen is 44, and he's their key man. And Fiore is in the same type of zone in which uh, they uh, which they used yesterday. It uh, features uh, the point guard at the top, a 1-2-2 two, two type zone, number 34, uh, Ivan Stone at the, at the top of the zone. Two shots by Marshall, the second by Mixon, rebounded by Harvey. Lions push it up the court. Weisinger stops and pops. Peoria draws first blood and quickly back down the court with a running one-hander. The Commandos get a rebound up and in by Kenneth Mixon. Dowdy shot the ball outside. Mixon rebounded at home. And we start up tempo and a steal in the backcourt nicely by Anthony Upshaw. Upshaw gives inside to Kevin Rice. And the ball hit off Rice's leg. And it goes to the Peoria Central Lions. Game is off to a roaring start. These teams are really lightning fast, both of them. I remember once out at USC when I was there, they somebody said, what is O.J. Simpson's number? And the guy said, if you got time to see the number, it ain't O.J. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit this, like this, these teams are both just jet quick. Steve Harvey is 10. 
And in the corner, Weisinger can shoot from most places. Rebounded Joe Stiffen. He'll be a dominant player in most games he plays in. He takes it all the way down the court and charges. Tony Weisinger stood there and Stiffen really ripped him. There we see Joe coming down the middle on this. And of course, what is needed here is the thing we talked about yesterday, the old fashioned PJ, that pull up jumper would avoid that charge. <laughs> it's two to two at the 642 mark and we're just underway. Or the Blue Jay would have worked there well, too. Well, huh? the Blue Jay would have worked in that situation, right? <laughs> Trap on the half court by the Marshall Commandos, and they're going to fall back into a zone. Quickly on the left, the Lions are moving the ball now, looking inside for Ivan Stone and Lamont Hanson, their big players, inside. I say big in relative manner. Here's a lob inside to Stone and a whistle first, and a foul is going to go against Kenneth Mixon. Trying to keep Ivan Stone from the ball as Chuck Fisher sits down very little. The Lions will keep the ball. This is the semifinals. The winner plays for the championship tonight. The loser will play in the third place game. We'll carry them both. Harvey and Weisinger outside. The zone is essentially a 2 1 2 or maybe. A 1-2-2. Two, two. They shift. Probably a 1-2-2 two, two at this point. They shift around so much in their quickness. It's so great. Sometimes it's difficult to determine exactly what it is. Harvey, who played so very well yesterday, slides in the seam of the zone and put it up, but it was partially blocked. But Harvey got it back, gives a head fake, gives it to Stone for a short one. Lamont Hansen is rebounding, and a foul is on Kevin Rice of the Commandos. We'll see that shot being taken from the side. And here again, as we referred to in the past, when that shot's taken off on that side, you've got to have position on the weak side because that's where the missed shot's going to come off. And, of course, he went over the top. A quick three team fouls on the commandos. Hanson's inside for a five-footer in the paint. And the rebound stiffen on the other end alone is Upshaw for a layup. Well, that's the two points that belong to Joe Stiffen. The defensive rebound, the great outlet pass, and an easy score. He looks like a short Wesley Unseld. He just tore the ball off the, box <laughs> the bank board and threw it down the court so easily. And Upshaw had an easy layup. Nixon tried, Rice tried to shut that down. And the Lions retained control. Marshall four, Peoria Central two, 5.16 to go, opening period. Frank Bassoni, along with Art Kimball and Coach Ron Nikovich of Lions Township of LaGrange. Weisinger shot is short. Williams tipped right. it in. Tip. Tim right. Williams Tip. at five foot ten found a place. That quickness, not only on the floor, but off the floor. Mixon comes right baseline, swirls into the lane with a 360 move to the paint. Great move. Four points for Mixon, and Marshall has a two-point lead. You get the feeling this is going to be an explosive basketball game. It is already. Central in the maroon red. Trimmed in white. Marshall in the white. I get the feeling, too, Frank, that these kids are enjoying every minute of this. There's no question of that. Lamont Hanson misses. Rice kicks it ahead to the running Mixon. Here comes Mixon with a one-hander! See what I mean? <laughs> Showtime. A little French, French pastry, and Mixon put on his Dr. J, and it's 8-4. to four. Marshall, a foul in the backcourt on Michael Dowdy. Once that adrenaline gets flowing, you're apt to see anything going. And... <laughs> There we see that Dr. J treatment coming up on this little finger swirl type layup that uh, probably gymnastics wise is a throw up 9.9 anyway, I guess. <laughs> 4 8 to play in the opening quarter. The talent is here. The quickness is here. The coaching is here. Weisinger delivers a shot and Stiffen boards out of bounds the Lions. Stiffen couldn't keep control. The rebounding is just, just vicious not not enough not in the sense that it's unclean but they're really going for that ball in a very hard fashion here's a lob inside to stone and he's hacked by anthony upshaw ivan stone is a marked man by the commandos yeah he is and of course when he goes to the free throw line he'll be risking yesterday's 12 for 12 and you know that's mr cool at the free throw line he's comfortable there Central is already on the bonus, gentlemen. That is team foul number five on Marshall. But fortunately for the Commandos, they have spread the five fouls around one each. And Ivan Stone will shoot 
One and bonus. Try to get the Lions within two. Well, he's got it going. He's still perfect in the tournament. Well, Chuck Fisher admitted yesterday's ball game really pleased him. Uh, his club played so extremely well. That's got to worry as a coach a little bit, too, doesn't it, Ron? Yeah, it certainly does. I think their quickness is a real intimidating factor. Two free throws by Ivan Stone makes Marshall's lead 8-6. to six. And there's the pressure by the Lions in the backcourt now. That's Marshall pressure. loses it. Stone just took it away in the middle of the court. He's free at the foul line. Yes. That's Mr. Cool. You know, he made the key steal and just brought it right up into the uh, Blue Jay area, Art. That's right. He had two eight yesterday. Rice shoots and misses. Nice rebound by Upshaw for two. He picked it off the floor and put it in. Very alert play. Upshaw is a pretty good ball player, Frank. We haven't talked a lot about him, but he has a lot of things for Marshall. He has four. Ten to eight. The Commandos take the lead. It's 320 to play. Opening period. Weisinger is open, but he missed. The ball is right here in front of us to Steve Harvey. Harvey backs in, gives it to Weisinger. Weisinger will not keep and will not stop shooting that outside shot when he's that wide open. He's not off by much. He's just off a hair. The zone is packed in, and Williams tries out of the corner. Look at Stone rebound. It's loose. Who's got it? A foul on Mixon. There's plenty of action under the basket. It's fast and it's furious. Right there. Second foul on Ken Mixon. And that sends the Lions back to the stripe where they were so successful yesterday. Hate to keep dwelling on the foul situation, which I have throughout the tournament, but uh, Marshall with 16 fouls, Peoria Central with none, and those fouls are going to cut Marshall's size advantage down a little bit as they go along. It happened yesterday, too, didn't it? Absolutely. Central goes to the line 41 times yesterday. Williams missed the free throw. Stone tipped it back to Williams very alertly, then sets up a low post. A skip pass intercepted by Anthony Upshaw, and here comes Mixon. Look at the transition. Dowdy. Two. Great pass. Just a great pass. Did you call that a pull up pass? Boy, Michael Dowdy <laughs> just found that. Now here's Upshaw with a near seal in the backcourt. There's defensive ability on both ends. Weisinger outside, 2.30 to play, Marshall 12, Peoria Central 8. Semifinals, first game. In the second, Harvey Thornton, Springfield Lamphere. That'll be a knockhead special. Oh, I'll say. They are both big and strong and talented. Stone is talented there. He gives back out to Weisinger. Harvey hangs it up a pass to Williams. His shot is not there. And the rebound is to the Commandos at the 2.05 mark. Central shot just a little short today. Well, we finally get a look at that zone again. We haven't seen a set defense for <laughs> such a long time. And Ivan Stone, the center, I referred to him as a guard earlier. I didn't mean that. He's the center playing at the top of that zone. Dowdy hits outside. And that was a nice long shot by Dowdy of four points for him, 14 to 8, in favor of the Commandos. And now the Lions will have to come back. Harvey splits two and gives to Williams. They look Good inside. Pass. Hansen wants the ball. He turns, and is a shot blocked by Ken Rice. Nicely done by Rice. Kevin Rice with the block. Up ahead to Rice, and he walks. One of those ang anxiety plays, I think. Coming in for the Lions, 12. Dennis Broadneck, Steve Harvey gets the rest, and coming in for the Commandos, Martin Kofer, 43. And at that, we have a timeout with 1.22 to go in the first period. It's Marshall by six, and one of your network sponsors is John Deere. The Commandos come on the court with a six-point lead. They're favored. The Peoria Central Lions came into the tournament not highly regarded, but after yesterday's performance went from long shot to big shot. And it's 122 in the first quarter. It's been fun game already. It certainly has, and these kids are enjoying every minute of it. I know the fans are, and I certainly am. Ivan Stone comes to help in the backcourt. If you just joined us, it's Peoria Central in the maroon. It's the Chicago Commando Marshall team in the white. Here's the jump shot by Ivan Stone, and it's all net. He's so stylish. Very much so. Very cool player. He has six. He had 28 against St. Joe. 
14 to 10, Marshall, one minute, first quarter. Kofer lobs inside, Mixon steps in, wheels around, misses a fancy shot inside. Central rebound. Well, if that one gone in, that would have been a 9.9. <laughs> At least. Maybe a perfect 10, huh? <laughs> Williams is free, and his shot is way short. And Mixon rebounds. Stiffen streaks to the other end. 25 years ago, an old Huff Jim, Marshall became the first public league team to ever win a state championship. And on this day, March 19th of 1977, the Lions of Central beat the Lions of Lanfear for the state championship. What a traditional Final Four, huh? Really. Now 20 history. seconds. The zone pushes Marshall outside. They want one shot. 14 seconds. Stephen Kern was going to take the shot, and it went off. Williams awarded to the commandos. Well, it's no doubt as to where they want that ball to go in that kind of a situation. No doubt as to where they want the ball to go right now as well. That'll be 44, Joe Stiffen, if they can. In the corner, it's Dowdy. Now there's 10. Back into the middle to Joe. Upshaw looking there for goes. Stiffen. There's the pass stolen by Stone. There's four seconds on the clock. Three interceptions and a five. Wait a minute. Traveling with one second against Marshall. Peoria High will have a ball and a chance for a shot with one second. Could have been a third foul on Mixon in that collision. So actually, I'm sure Luther Bedford uh, who's up on the edge of the floor right now, happy with the traveling call. Let's see where the ball goes. The shot is up too late by I uh, Lamont Hanson. And that's the end of quarter one of our first semifinal with the score. Marshall 14, Peoria Central 10. And one of your network sponsors is DeKalb Pfizer Genetics. The story of the first quarter was that the Peoria Central Lions couldn't get their shots to drop, and they are four points behind the Marshall Commandos. Those shots will be dropping, and those shooters who were shooting those shots and certainly will continue to fire away as this ballgame progresses. Weisinger wasn't off by much. So we're set for the second eight minutes of play. Peoria High in the maroon or red, and Marshall in the white, stiffened. Goes up and commands the tip to Kofer. Now Mixon gives back inside and it's smothered quickly by the Lions. The tick back up by Upshaw for two. Well, they're winning the battle with a loose ball. Now Marshall by six with pressure on three-quarter or half court. There's a trap right there. They've got Broadnecks in trouble and he steps over the line, over and back, and the Marshall defense wins. A great trap. A great trap. They sealed off, got him into the corner and sealed off all potential avenues to release the ball. And so Marshall has a chance to take an eight-point lead. This is Upshaw, their guard at six foot. He's the senior, a co-captain. He works against Weisinger. Dowdy swirls around and gives to Kofer, and he beat him to the baseline, lays it up and in. That's a 9.9. Kofer with a left-hander. 18 to 10 is Marshall's advantage. And for the cold shooting Lions must start warming it up. Charging foul, Broadnex, and the roll is going to the Commandos. And here again, Peoria is being trapped in that classic trap area. Here's your statistics. Peoria, 4 of 16, only 25% the first quarter. Marshall answered 7 of 12, 58%. The Lions made two free throws. The rebounds were exactly even in the turnovers. Marshall, 6, Peoria, Central, 3. But the cold shooting, 25% to 58, and Harvey returns for the Lions. Broadnex is out. And the last two turnovers Marshall has really earned. Good defense by the Commandos, and they could now take a 10-point advantage in the early going. And if you recall, that's what they did to Elgin yesterday. They jumped on him for a 10-point lead. We saw that throughout the uh, opening round yesterday. Look at Mixon lead. go inside. And I think he was fouled by Tony Weisinger of the Lions as he went to the basket. They're having no trouble getting inside. On the replay, we'll see that uh, the Marshall player takes the ball inside, and just a little nudge there on there, took the ball over on the other side and prevented it from going in. Six points in the game for Mixon, who's come out of the shoot very well. Talking to Luther Bedford, Frank, uh, before this ball game, the Marshall coach, he didn't think his club played all that well against Elgin yesterday. But uh, he felt it was a rather typical Marshall game, second half of the season. Efficient. They never really, uh, you never had the feeling yesterday they were in real trouble. And they're starting to take command here. Play hard and win. 
20 to 10. The Commandos by 10, and the Lions need a hoop this time down the court. Of course, Luther also admitted coaches are never happy with the way you play. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, of course, is an exception to that. That's why my hair is black. <laughs> a couple of W's is all people could ask for in the world today as a head coach. At least you have hair. <laughs> that tells you what the tougher business is, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Williams on the right side to Weisinger, who starts in. The zone is tough. Weisinger weaves his way to Harvey. The Lions trying to find a place in the zone that they can get a shot from. It gets into Williams, who shoots it up and rolls in. Oh. And it counts. They really earned that one. They worked awfully hard for that basket. Great passing flow. Watch the flow. I don't know if the uh, rerun will get the complete flow of the ball, but I think it was the passing that paid off for that kind of a basket. A great play. Foul, foul is on Kofer. 17 foul. It'll be a shot coming up here as Kevin Rice in, and Mixon gets a rest for the Commandos. Country Companies Insurance is presenting IHSA basketball for the 12th consecutive year. And your local country company's agent hopes you're enjoying our telecast. We sure hope you're watching tonight as we decide the state champion for 1983. Williams, a three-point play, and once again shows that he plays taller than 5'10". Stiffen at center court, and the Lions can't handle Marshall this time down. 20-13, the commando stiffen in the lane, turns and puts it off the board. Once the ball starts going into his hands to a greater degree of regularity, uh, we may see uh, a real bust out on Marshall's part. That's the first two points of the game for Stiffen, so he wasn't a factor in their early 10-point advantage in terms of scoring points. He's always a factor when he's around the basket, intimidating. Weisinger. There it goes. Four think, points for Tony. Think he's warming up. Well, he's been a remarkable shooter all season long for the Lions. Now they look inside, and Stiffen turns on a fadeaway that's rolling in. Stiffen with a good touch. He really squared up beautifully on a tough shot. 24 to 15, as you see, with 5.28 to play in the first half. Ivan Stone answers. Mr. Stone's cool. He played 32 minutes of a hard-nosed basketball on both ends yesterday and wasn't even perspiring. He never does. Here's a pass to the center and kicked out to Doughty. Stop, and he shoots it home from 15 feet on the left wing. Marshall shooting a brilliant percentage. He will that one in. 26 to 17. I like that. You can see the body language he was uh, using. Followed through and just kept, kept with it all the way. Never quit. 4.55 in the first half. The assembly hall is filling up. I don't mean to say that there's not a lot of empty seats, but they're coming, still coming in, and we're going to have a big house for our semifinal when they all get here. 12,400 for last night's session here at the Hall. The Lions with it, looking to cut into that nine-point Marshall lead. They need to get the ball in the hands of Stone and Weisinger, and Tony shoots it in again. He's warming up. He's right there. Half a dozen for Weisinger, who averages 14. Here's a nice move by Dowdy. He beat three men down the court. That finds Stephen along the baseline for a layup. That didn't go. And Hanson rebounds. A little too hard, but great body control for Joe on that one. Stephen is just a remarkable looking athlete. Can Tony Weisinger make it three in a row? Three in a row. And all of a sudden, the lead is five as Weisinger has built his point total to eight. Luther Bedford wants to stop play, and he does at the 4.06 mark as the Lions answer. It's Marshall by five, and one of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. We genuinely hope you're enjoying today's high school basketball double-A tournament, and we'd like to hear from you. Drop us a line at high school basketball box 678, Bloomington, Illinois, 61701. Box 678, Bloomington, 61701. Frank Bassoni, along with Art Kimball and coach Ron Nikovich of Lions of LaGrange is 406 to go in the first half, and Tony Weisinger has cut that Marshall lead down to five. Yeah, he certainly has. He's warmed up. He wasn't missing by much in the first quarter, and of course, this time around, he's right on the beam. Here's a traveling violation against Stiffen, and the Lions will have it again. Now, some of these shooters are just remarkable. You could see Bayes last night, and you could yes. see some of the others. When they get on their game, it looks like they could throw the ball through the hoop from a moving cab. And I think the reason for that is because the technique and the fundamentals with which they shoot is so outstanding that 
percentage and consistency will always be there. Great steal by the Stiffen and the Commandos come down. Pull up jumper right there by Dowdy rolling home. That's the PJ, Frank. <laughs> Michael Dowdy, who averages 17, has eight in the first half. Marshall by seven. Zone defense stays one, two, two, essentially. It sure has a lot of different configurations to it with that kind of quickness out there. It's difficult sometimes to tell exactly what it is. Hanson made a really big, strong move to the hoop, and Kevin Rice banged him inside. And I think the difference that we're going to see in the replay now on this shot by uh, Hanson is the, the hang time. Watch the hang time. A little double pump and just hung in there long enough to draw the foul. He knew he wasn't going to get the shot off, but he hung in there. The second foul on Kevin Rice. Hanson goes 6'3 and 190. His foul shot is not in. He's a 72% free throw shooter. And Lamont Hanson is looking for his first point of the game. Upshaw went out. And Jerome Dowdy, 10, in a junior for the Commandos. Three shot down by Hanson. The lead for Marshall is six. There's the ball tipped out of bounds by Steve Harvey of the Lions. As the defense is a constant in this game, both teams play it, both teams play it well, and I'm sure it's what has brought them this far, at least to a large extent. Young Mr. Harvey plays that stop, doesn't he? Coast to coast. He really does. He's five foot six and a half. And that goes to show you, you can make great contributions in this sport without being a giant. With that kind of quickness, wow. Oh, here's the traveling violation on Jerome Dowdy in the front court. And with 3.01, the Lions have a chance to cut the lead to four. Look at this defense. The trap. The quick. It's waiting for that center line trap. If they can get the ball into that classic corner, they'll trap it. Dowdy fell down. Weisinger kept moving. Weisinger's on the right wing. And they kept mixing out on him. Here's Stone being stripped inside by Strong Stiffen. And look at the commandos make the transition to the pass as wild. There's the turnover. Been watching Michael Doughty out there for Marshall very closely. He is a brilliant playmaker. Now that time he just a little bit too much lead on the pass, but uh, he looks one way, passes the other with extreme accuracy. It's too bad there weren't people on the wings uh, because too much center play in a fast break will result in a play getting broken up that way. Everyone was in the middle of the floor. We have 225 to play in the first half of our first semifinal game. And Marshall leads Central. And Central trying to Come back, traveling on Lamont Hanson as he got the basket down along the baseline. But just as soon as young Mr. Hanson gets himself involved in the game offensively, it could create a real swing for Peoria. We'll watch for that as a key. Hanson has one point in the first half, and he's a capable scorer, averages 12 a game. So wow. far, he and Joe have been rather silent in that regard. They're both very strong. Stiffen is the best leaper in the tournament with a 40-inch vertical jump. It is absolutely amazing. There's the foul on Stone, and Stiffen's strong enough to still get it off and nearly get it in. Stiffen. Ivan Stone. Stone. We'll see on the replay that Joe's strength, Joe Stiffen, of course, his strength is such in a simple little ball fake through the defense off the ground, and, of course, uh, potentially three-point play there because that shot wasn't too far off. Take a look at his upper legs, Coach. Uh, oh. The muscle that's there is... Yeah, I'll tell you, if George Allen and those guys are around, uh, look out, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was a blitz, huh? <laughs> He's bigger than a free safety. He might be a linebacker. Yeah, he couldn't play free safety. He hurt somebody back there. <laughs> He'd be great in any sport, I think. He's an outstanding athlete. You know, I think that's a very good observation. I, I don't believe there's a sport you, I could think of that he couldn't play. 30 to 22, the Commandos. 2.03 to go in the first half. Look at the full court pressure now. And Weisinger explodes out of it. Weisinger quickly down. Under two minutes. Set play for the Lions. They stack three men on the left side of the lane, and they run Harvey away from it. They're going to pop out Stone, lob down low to Hanson, turn around, one-hander. Williams rebounds and scores. That's the second time he's done that today at 5'8". 
5'10". Really, a, really an excellent offensive rebound and contribution by Tim Williams. A minute 30 now in the first half. Marshall by six in the ball. The Lions and the Commandos, both featuring that fierce defense. Jerome Dowdy with the ball on your screen, and there you see him move the ball of the corner to Michael Dowdy for a shot that didn't go. Ivan Stone finds the rebound. And Tony Weisinger found his spot. He's got her four for four. That same spot is right there. Weisinger with 10, 30 to 26. And Tony Weisinger warms up the assembly hall. He's an outstanding player. Right? He's an excellent player in, in virtually every phase of the game. He's a fine defensive player. He's got quickness. I guess the only thing against him is the fact that he's not six foot three when you talk major college, but I think he's a Division I player. He certainly is. He has all the attributes of a Division I player except for that. But you know, without that and the great quickness, the quickness is such a great compensating factor. I remember one coach once said there are two kinds of teams, the quick and the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty accurate, too. Tonight, we'll have the third place game. We'll be on at 6.15 for that. And then the championship. Who will it be? Two of these teams. Oh, that lob pass in this kind of a situation isn't what you want, nor too much dribbling. Now 10 seconds. Mixon goes in and shoots and scores. He really scored up well. Here's a Five. steal. Here's a steal. Another shot at Dowdy. Good again. Dowdy at the gun. And a big turnaround for the Commandos. And they go down at the halftime with a lead over Peoria Central, 34 to 26. And what a flurry at the end for the Commandos. Best thing about that, as far as Peoria is concerned, is that the horn one, because just as soon as a roll develops like that, it could have been a 10-point run. We're gonna come back with our halftime in a moment. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. The Lions had closed the floor in the closing seconds as Ken Mixon shoots this shot up and in at the eight-second mark of the first half. Then the Lions throw it in and Stiffen bats it away, as you can see on that excellent replay. And then Michael Dowdy fires it up at 3-2-1, and all of a sudden the four-point lead was gone, and it was an eight-point commando lead at 34-26 in an exciting first-half semifinal. The Marshall Commandos find themselves leading, but the Peoria Central Lions have come from behind before, and we've still got a whole half to decide which of these teams will be in our championship game tonight. It's really been an exciting uh, thrill for me to participate in this uh, 1983 AA uh, tournament, and it has for Art and Ron Nikovich, I know, too, and I hope that you've enjoyed our presentations of these games as both teams have great athletes and great talent. Let's take a look at that talent and how they did in the first half of play. For the Commandos, Mixon with 10 points and a brilliant half. Two fouls. Rice didn't score, had two fouls. Stiff in the center with six points and one foul. Michael Dowdy, a great contribution from outside with ten points and a foul. Upshaw, six points. Kofer with two, each with one foul. They spread the fouls well. Ten by two. For the Central Lions, it was Weisinger with ten to lead the way at one foul. Ivan Stone with eight. Tim Williams with a good half with seven. Lamont Hansen didn't get involved in the offense, only one point. Dennis Broadnex came off the bench, got a foul, and Steve Harvey didn't score in the first half of play. That's the individuals, and we'll be back in a moment. One of your network sponsors is DeKal Pfizer Genetics. Doors. Well, with Ron Nikovich, and Ron, we have uh, a Marshall Ball Club that uh, is playing pretty good basketball right now, and uh, I think you were right. The buzzer helped Peoria Central there at the halftime intermission. Yeah, I think after the quick four-point uh, explosion on a part of Marshall, that, that could have led to additional five, six points. Could have been a 10, 12-point run. One never knows, and I think a spurt like that could be a real factor in this ball game that features such extreme quickness. Eight points right now. I don't know. I think that with Peoria's great quickness and the additional pressure that they're going to exert in the second half, that eight points could uh, dissipate quickly if Joe Stiffen remains out of the game as far as the offensive end is concerned. I think we're seeing uh, the more typical Marshall performance perhaps this afternoon than we did yesterday afternoon. Uh, first game in the assembly hall and uh, Elgin kind of matched him up with size, but Peoria Central's problem uh, in the uh, final uh, analysis probably is going to be lack of size on the board, isn't it? Yeah, it probably will be. They were trying to get the ball into Lamont Hansen a little bit. Uh, and, of course, at 6'3", uh, it's difficult for him to match up with some of the Marshall players inside. I think a key will remain Tony Weisinger, who had 4 for 4, of course, in the second quarter. But in addition, I think that Ivan Stone's going to have to warm up and be the factor that he was yesterday. But I really do think that with the 8-point difference right now and the Peoria quickness, their press, 
and their ability to run the ball up the court uh, that uh, what happens probably in the first three minutes of the third quarter will be a factor with respect to the long run of the ball game. All right, and one of your network sponsors is John Deere. Your halftime score is Marshall 34 and Peoria Central 26, and part of the festivities that everyone's enjoyed at the Assembly Hall has been the music, and the music has been provided by a variety of bands over the past two tournaments, and here on Saturday at the semifinals, we're being entertained by the band from Decatur MacArthur. They're called the Generals, and we'll give them a listen right now. <laughs> the team stats as Betty Davis eyes goes in the background and Chicago Marshall shot him out 15 for 22 and 68 percent of the first half of play the Lions build it back from uh, chilly 25 to 45 11 of 24 in the free throw department four for four 100 percent four of six 66 rebounding and favors the Lions by four turnovers are exactly even at nine we're going to be back with the second half of the first semifinal between Marshall and Peoria High one of your network sponsors, DeKalb Pfizer Genetics. The cheerleaders are trying to bring the Peoria Central Lion crowd to their feet to urge on their team. Is at halftime, they're down by eight, Ron Nikovich, and we should have a very good second half. We certainly should, and I really look forward to uh, Peoria coming back into it, and perhaps rather quickly, too. I think the key to the outcome of the ball game will be the degree to which they eat into that eight-point lead within the first three or four minutes of the opening uh, period of the second half. Do you think they'll really do anything much differently? Will they try to get the ball more to Stone or, or more to Weisinger? I think what will what they'll really try to do, and, and, and I think a young man who has to really get involved in the game more offensively is Lamont Hansen. Okay, Hanson uh, was held to a point in the first half. He got a fine game inside from Tim Williams, the Lions. He had five rebounds in the first half. That matched Mixon, the leading rebounders, in the first half of play. It's Joe Stiffen in the middle against Lamont Hanson. The final half for one of these teams. Title hopes. Here's the tip. It goes to Marshall. And that's Upshaw. It's a Dowdy, and they set it up. The zone remains a constant for the Lions with Ivan Stone at the top of it. It's still not perspiring, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> Marshall attacking the zone. Trying to look inside to Rice posted up. Dowdy outside. Rebound Henson. Who will draw first blood second half? Both these teams play with such confidence. You look at them, they look like they expect to win. They all have that look in their eyes, don't they? The intensity is there. The intensity, right. They have confidence. Both teams are well schooled. Along the baseline, that's Stone. He and Weisinger, they're on the same side, and they're the best two scorers that Chuck Bisher has for the Lions. They're being very patient. This zone is more clearly a 1-2-2 formation now, but it, but, uh, 
But on the other hand, Peoria, of course, is more patient than they were at the uh, many stages during the first half. And the, consequently, the zone has greater degree of definition now. Weisinger is still there. Five for five. There's Tony, and he's got a dozen. And Lamont Hansen just stole a pass. Now the Lions could cut the lead to four. That center court pass again. Ivan Stone hangs it up. The rebound comes down to the commandos. So alertly, Hansen picked one off, but the Lions couldn't get it down to four. Luther Bedford's not happy with what he's seeing. He went up and said something to a couple of his players and now sits down. Lob inside Rice, up and down. Rebound, Dowdy inside. Good, good. Missed it, Stiffen. Now Hansen, three cracks for the commandos. Now Harvey needs help in the backcourt and nobody noticed it. William Zittinger, Weisinger's got the rhythm. You can tell both of these teams will fight to the death. You can just feel that they won't go down easy. Weisinger left wing. Well, he found a new spot. And the Commandos rebound. 34 for Marshall, 28 for Peoria Central. 5.42 to play, third quarter. Frank Bassoni, along with Art Kimball and Coach Ron Nikovich of Lions Township High School of LaGrange. Inside it goes to Stiffen, and that's, he just muscled in two. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a real key, too, for Marshall's fortunes, of course, the degree to which they can successfully get the ball inside the blue to Joe and the, getting that power move under. He has only eight points thus far. Lamont Hansen's shot is rejected by Mixon. But the Lions keep control. Inside jump ball as Tim Williams is pinned by fierce Joe Stiffen. Joe, re Joe really didn't have to do too much on this one, as you'll see in the replay. He just merely went around the backside, waited for that ball to go up, and just kind of knocked it back down again without any body whatsoever. Plenty of clearance between the two young players. It's like trying to shoot a jump shot in a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Wheatley, our director, and we thank you and the crew for the, all the help in the series. Jan Morrow, our assistant producer. Brad Johansson, statistician. Here's a charging foul being called on 22. Michael Dowdy, who got an eye for the rim and really turned it on. This is Chuck Fisher of the Lions leans back. John Deere and your local John Deere dealer are happy to have you with us for this class double-A tourney. Be sure to join us tonight at 6.15 for the consolation followed by the championship of 83. Marshall by eight, five minutes. Harvey intercepted it. And the commandos run after it, track it down, give it to Dowdy, to Mixon for two. And Marshall leads by 10. A dozen for Mixon. Marshall playing much better than even they did yesterday. Williams outside to Harvey. Now the Lions must cut into a 10-point advantage as Williams' shot is short, and the rebounding belongs to the men in white. Dowdy in a swirl in the lane. Stiffen handled the dish off, and they're under control again. I think they're showing at the outset of this half a greater degree of poise than we'd earlier seen. Nixon, twice, foul the Lions. They're more patient. Their judgment is, is better, too. They eliminated Elgin, 59 to 46 yesterday. And they have the Peoria Central Lions on the ropes. But there's plenty of time because we're only in the third quarter. And there's timeout on the court at 4.16 to go. Marshall's got the lead by 10. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. On the 25th anniversary of their state championship title, the Marshall Commandos have a 10-point lead in the third quarter over the Peoria Central Lions, 4.16 to play. And uh, Marshall has uh, increased their lead by two within the first four minutes of this third quarter. It's only been a four to two run for the first four minutes of this quarter, but I think Peoria has really got to eat into that lead now at this particular point in time. Mixon, who's had a fine game, missed the front end of a two-shotter. However, with their quickness, that, that explosion can take place at any time. They can turn the ball over, as we've seen in the St. Joseph Westchester game. And the Lions have got a couple of guys that can put them down. So let's see if they can fight back into it now. And here comes that half-court trap by Marshall. That's been a real factor in the game. It's interrupted the flow of the Lions' offense. 
They fall back into a zone from the trap, and it's extended somewhat. They can push your offense out to the lobby when they get out to half court with it. But on the other hand, it will open up Stone and, and Hanson inside, as it did that time. Foul is on Kevin Rice, picked up the foul. His third foul. And the Lions have it at the top is Tim Williams. He turns and shoots. Squared up beautifully for that shot. Tim Williams with nine. Had a good game. Had a good tournament for that matter. That's five rebounds the first half for a little fella. That's a good, good day's work. Marshall by eight. 3.30 to play. Third quarter. This game will be followed by Thornton against Landfear. Both 28 and three and both capable of winning it all. Inside stolen pass by Ivan Stone. The quick hands of Ivan Stone picked one off. Here's Weisinger on the move. Lamont Hanson steps in, is fouled. The foul, I believe, is on Stiffen. As Lamont Hanson made a move to the goal, Stiffen fouled him his second. There's strength on strength with Hanson and Stiffen as Luther Bedford talks to Joe Stiffen. When worlds collide. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of strength, Thornton is coming up next. They have a center that's 6'8 and 220. They have a forward who's 6'5 and 200. The Lion Fair Lions, they're they have 6'7 and 6'8 up front. They have a guard that's 6'5. That'll be a classic encounter. Lamont Hansen trying to cut the lead now to six. He converts. 310. And here come the commandos, the public league champions. Stiffen at the high post turns. Busting out for the set the low post was Mixon, and he wanted that ball down there. You see Fiore in a man to man. Or out of the zone. First time and a steal by Tim Williams. Overplayed beautifully. Anticipated the pass and gave him what they needed. And that's why they're in the man to man now. They shut that pass down. And the zone stays for the commandos. Williams wants to do it. Now he does it. Well, he's doing a lot of things today. He's in double figures with 11. The lead is shaved to four at 2.30 to play here in the third quarter. And now let's see what the, if the commandos did what they get against Elgin. When they were challenged, they pulled back to their 10-point lead. They sure did. They played up to their competition level and then some. Well, what, they're, what they haven't done yet is to adjust their offense against this man-to-man. -man. Inside Mixon, he's got a free shot. But they did that time. And Kenneth Mixon has showed his stuff. He's got 14. And he's a good player. Here comes the half-court trap again by Marshall. 40, 34. The clock says two minutes, third quarter. You can feel the drama building as the building fills up. Harvey looks for help. Harvey swings it over to Williams. Williams has become a good scoring guard or forward, however you care to list him, player. He's an all-everything type. He does a little bit of everything. He's just a player's player. <laughs> he and Ken Mixon have really been the stars of this ball game. Actually, respective games. He didn't start earlier in the season. Tony Foote was a starter, a 6'4 player. Brought Williams off the bench. Baseline. Now Harvey down to 120. Six point lead for Marshall. Weisinger turns. I think Chuck Fisher would like the third quarter to end with his team only four points behind. He'd be very happy. Wouldn't be a bad idea at this stage either. Of course, there's still a lot of time to go in a quarter. Minute five. Inside is Hanson. He is fouled. Fouled by Stiffen. Stiffen didn't give Hanson any room in there. That's the third on Big Joe. Marshall has lost to Gary West of Indiana, Chicago Young, Chicago Collins, and Peoria Manuel. Central has lost to Peoria Manuel twice and to Quincy. Stiffen goes out with three fouls. Martin Kofer, 43, comes in, a 6'4 senior. The Lions have it under their own goal. One minute. Weisinger, dead corner. Rebound Stone, up and down and missed. Another rebound. Good. Great tip. Hansen. Great tip. With 50 seconds. He never quit on it. He never quit on it. Just hung in there. Give Hansen a brilliant tip in. 44 seconds. Now Marshall hurries down the court. Will they take one shot? They're ahead by four. 
They led at the half by eight. Central's cut the lead in half. But here comes Mixon. Oh, nice play. Great play. Great play. The middle was just simply too open there. He needed some help on that. Didn't get it. 16 points for Mixon. 20 seconds. Now the Lions will try to cut it to four once more. And Chuck Fisher says, one shot, please. You see him in the lower left corner of your screen. There he is. Says one. Calls out an offense. 10 seconds. Watch it be Weisinger or Stone. Or a tipping by Hanson. Here's Stone, a fadeaway. Short. Tipped up by Hanson. Just missed the call, coach of the gun. And at the close. end of three periods, Marshall, 42. Peoria Central, 36. One of your network sponsors, Country Companies Insurance. Final eight minutes in the first semifinal. The final four. Marshall has the lead of six. And they have eight minutes to become one of two for the state champion. They are in white. Peoria Central. Six points behind. Has to rally. Jerry Schnee of the Chicago Tribune wrote in his pre-tournament article, quoting Naismith, the bard of basketball, you never win in tournament play. You only survive to lose another day. And the ball is in the air. Well, Jerry's old enough to have known Mr. Naismith. <laughs> We saw Jerry this morning and had a nice chat with him. He has enjoyed this tournament just like all of us have. Two I'm one, great two. tournament. I'm not sure Naismith ever really said that. But. I'm not sure Naismith ever knew what a tournament was either. <laughs> Williams fake the shot. Now steps in, gives it to Stone inside, rejected by Stephen. But the basket counts. It's called goaltending. Well. Stephen went up and got it. Got called for goaltending. Give the goal to Ivan Stone. He has 10. And it's 42 to 38, and Stiffen talks to the official. Luther Bedford can't believe it. He just <laughs> stood up and shook his head in front of the Marshall bench. Joe Stiffen can get where other people can't. And Dowdy wheels up. He stays under control, and he can spin around on the dribble. He's guarded by Weisinger, and that's a good match. Look at Mixon beat Williams to the baseline for two. Classic one-on-one -on -one confrontation there. Mixon at six foot three, took Williams at five ten to the hole. To see on the replay, well, we missed part of it because what enabled him to get the advantage was an explosive first step. It was just a blur. 18 for Mixon, who's been the shooting star for the Marshall, and they have 61 percent still at 19 of 31 after three. Peoria 15 of 36, 41. Free throwing is pretty even. Rebounding the favor of the Lions, 22 to 15 in turnovers. Marshall has two more. The three-point play by Mixon gives him 19 in the game and builds Marshall's lead back to seven. That was a big three-point play in this game. Now the Lions need to build their momentum back, and they need it with a hoop. Remember, coming up next, Weisinger shoots it in. Well, that puts him six out of seven of his last uh, seven outside shots, and he's, he's found up, a new spot that time. He's up to 14 in the game. The score is there. Harvey goes after the ball like a cobra. A cobra. <laughs> he gets up quicker than I fall down. Look at the way by Weisinger. He pulled it off. He got the ball off Upshaw with a streak of quickness. And Marshall wants we'll to see stop that play. Let's great see. move on, on the part of Weisinger and just explosive quickness there and a courageous move too, I might add, because this table, I don't know about Weisinger, but the table may never recover. There's your score on one of your network sponsors with timeout on the court is DeKalb Pfizer Genetics. And we'll see if the tape says that Joe Stiffen goaltended or not. Here we see not. the goaltend on Joe Stiffen. Uh, the ball is up in the air, and uh, it's kind of, uh, well, of course, uh, let the fans decide that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard fellas Bob and Weave before, but that, that takes the award. <laughs> Very definite maybe by Coach Nikovich. <laughs> 6.30 to play in this game. Five points separate them. Weisinger's shot falls short. It falls into the hands of Williams. Has it swatted away by the inside man, Kevin Rice. Well, Peoria got lucky on that one because I don't believe that's the kind of shot that neither, uh, looking back, Tony probably didn't like it either. I'm sure Coach Fisher did it. Eight rebounds for little Tim Williams. Inside it's well, he Stone. Found him. He found him. A dozen for Ivan Stone. It's a three-point game. Marshall leads and has the ball. Rice to the baseline. Stepped out of bounds. 
That earlier poise that we alluded to in a part of Marshall early in the third quarter is beginning to evaporate here. They need to get back into that now because right now we're looking at a three-point game with six minutes to go, and it's anybody's ball game. Marshall has 14 turnovers. Central has nine. Central will try to cut the lead to one. The clock is at 6.02. Doria guards are handling that half-court trap much better than they did in the first half. Williams on the right wing. Loading up is Weisinger. Inside is Hansen, and he is hooked by Stiffen. Hansen went to the glass, and there's Stiffen, his fourth foul. Okay, we're going to see that pass going inside to Lamont Hanson, who, in my opinion, still remains the key in the ball game because if he gets what he's capable of getting here in the final six minutes, this game could make a swift turn. Hanson will go to the line. The Class AA tournament, co-sponsored again this year by DeKalb Pfizer Genetics and the more than 1,100 DeKalb Pfizer Genetic dealers here in Illinois. And they invite you to join us next week for the girls' championship games. Hanson missed the first. He needs to hang in there with that shot a little bit more. I think he's quitting on it too soon. I think the follow-through has got to be a bit more intense than he's shown. And, of course, I think the pressure is beginning to develop on everybody out on the floor here. You saw Stiffen sit. Martin Kofer returned to the floor. And Hansen delivered. A two-point ball game with 549. So what else is new? Well, we've seen. Foul on Harvey on the fly. Harvey fouled Anthony Upshaw, Harvey second. Only Peoria Central's third foul of the second half, so uh, Marshall not on the bonus and not uh, really all that close to it. It's going to take two more. Coach Fisher says one. I imagine that's man-to-man. -man. That's what it is, and it's pressure. Into the backcourt it is. Upshaw blows by Harvey. Here he comes. He's got Mixon ahead of him. Stop and run it up. Ivan Stone. And now the Lions can shoot for the tie. Listen to the assembly hall. Stone, 20-footer. Wasn't quite set. Got a little bit hurried that time. I think, once again, it's one of those anxiety kinds of plays that young people are prone to make, particularly in these kinds of circumstances, which I think anybody would make. The defense never rests on either end. Marshall, the ball on a two-point lead. Look at now what's happening. Here's the ball on the floor. Hofer picked it quickly up. Quick hands. They're traveling on Anthony Upshaw. And once again, the red flag Lions have a chance to tie the game. That was a case of hands being too quick for the ball. <laughs> Peoria Central's Lions were called the Maroons until 1947 when a student vote changed it to the Lions. And they played like hungry lions in this tournament but they're down two right here both. baseline williams under five minutes now in the game you see the zone for marshall weisinger's on the point williams gives to stone stone had a free shot now he decides to take it took too long look at lamont hansen he rebounded it in, but he fouled first, and it doesn't count. He went off the top, uh, and it's very evident that he went off the top. And here again, the, we'll see in the replay that Lamont Hansen did go off the top. He did not have inside position, and of course, it's plain that the uh, the foul was a justifiable call on the part of the official. But I think the last two shots that Central has had coming down the court, at least in the part of Ivan Stone, were uh, probably required a little more patience, I think. Ron, isn't Martin Cooper very important right now? He's coming in for Stephen, and the Lions want to go inside. They may be able to do so. They may, and of course, he's not in there at this stage, but he will be flashing in there, I'm sure. And of course, Joe won't be out there long. Upshaw works against Harvey. The count is on. The clock says 420. The Lions hawking the man, the man. Whistle away from the ball. Foul is on Marshall. It's on Kofer, I believe. That's it. Martin Kofer on a push. One and one for the Lions. And the one and one 
if successful, could tie the game. And this is that kind of a situation where you really potentially are converting four points here because Marshall gave up their opportunity for two, and they're putting an excellent free thrower at the line for his opportunity to gain two. And, of course, that could be a four-point spread at this stage. It becomes very critical. Darius, uh, Dennis Broadnex checked in for Harvey for the Lions, and Ivan Stone, there's Luther Bedford staring at Ivan Stone, who's about to shoot a one and bonus, a 69% foul shooter. And it's home. Well, I don't think he's missed any, has he, in the nope. last two days? He's he has uh, not. 15 for 15, I believe. Stone has 13. 12 and 12 yesterday. Three for three today, I believe. Right. That's 15 straight, 16 straight free throws by Ivan Stone. The game is tied. And now, time out on the court. 4.15 left, and we've got ourselves one honey of a ball game. Stay with us. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. Wherever you're watching around this great state, you're watching the best high school basketball tournament on earth. Whether you're in Chicago, Springfield, Mount Vernon, Champaign, or Peoria, we welcome you. Quincy, Rockford, Rock Island, and Harrisburg. We hope you enjoy the action. 4.15 to play as Marshall and Peoria High have battled and it's tied, and Marshall has the ball. The Lions have outscored the Commandos 9-3 in the final period to come back from 10 points behind to tie at 45. In the backcourt, Broadnex goes after Upshaw and fouls him. Upshaw was streaking toward the sidelines, and Broadnex there. 5'9", Junior, who comes off the bench. And now Marshall's on the bonus, so both ball clubs uh, will be shooting bonus free throws the rest of the way. Upshaw is a 69% free throw shooter. Has not tried a free throw in this game. He has six. Perfect. That's called a silencer. Marshall by one, 409. <laughs> Upshaw is one out of two. Rice saves it inbounds to. Marshall. Great play. Great, Great heads-up play. Rice made a sensational play. And Marshall has a one-point lead, and they keep the ball. Upshaw to the left. Nixon. Oh, Stiffen's alone. He's all by himself for an easy two-pointer. Joe Stiffen. He has 10, and now Marshall by three. But there's still 340. The Lions must answer again. Now let's see who they go to. They call set play. Broadneck starts to the left. Three and a half minutes in the game. And there's Weisinger inside to Stone. He steps in, lost the handle, and Marshall has the ball and a three-point lead. Big play there, and a big now advantage for the Commandos. Well, they answered the challenge of Fiore. Oh, look at the play by Weisinger, but he fouled. And Weisinger thought he had it. On the steal, we'll see Weisinger get more hand than ball, and he just, you know, probably from between the elbow and the wrist, got a good chunk of the arm there, as well as the ball. Coach, Would have been a key steal. Coach Fisher asked the official, how'd you see it? Because a blur. <laughs> 3.13 to go. There is sideline action, 48 to 45, Marshall. And once again, that man, Upshaw. down. Marshall Anthony, by four. Anthony's mind is only on one thing, and it has been the last three times, the last three free throws that he's shot, and they've been bingo perfect. Great concentration. There's a whistle. There's a violation. The man in the back moved after the ball was handed to the free thrower, a violation, Coach. Yes, and that's considered part of the free throw lane area. And, of course, the fans in the assembly hall, I'm sure, are a little bit baffled by what happened there. And it's one of those unfortunate things 
and it could have a factor uh, a bearing on the uh, later on outcome of the game. It sure could. Tim Williams throws one up and goes out. He rebounds and a jump ball. The rebound with him there was Kevin Rice. Rice is 6'4", Williams may be 5'10". So the advantage will go to the commandos on the jump ball in height, 302 to play. As it stands now, the Central Lions need two possessions to tie if you figure a two-point trip. The ball is batted for the Marshall goal. Dowdy goes all the way. He's fouled, and he's fouled by Harvey. He didn't get the hoop, but he will shoot two, I'm sure. Uh, it's a wonder to me that he even got the ball up in the air with that kind of well, you see the uh, the tip here, and it's a heads-up tip on a part uh, of the Marsha player who got it in the right place, but how he ever got that shot off, I'll never know because that central player was riding him all the way. Kevin Rice had such a height advantage that he got a whole hand on the ball and sent it about 15 feet ahead of the running Michael Doughty. Doughty is trying his first free throw of the game, his first two for that matter, <clears throat> and we're just under the three-minute mark. And Marshall leads by five. Marshall kids have gone to the line with just total intensity and concentration, which is, of course, what the name of the game is with uh, in free throw shooting. It's a mental thing. They've done what they've had to do. And two for Michael Doughty. Marshall by six. Can Central come back? They've got 255 to try. Looking at that half court trap once again which Central has been handling very well throughout the course of the second half. Central doesn't look hurried, even though the clock has a stingy 2.43 left. The lob is inside to Hansen. Weisinger a pull-up. Oh, is he a shooter? Timeout Central. 51-47 with 2.34. And the officials recognize the timeout with 2.34 to go. We'll be back in just a minute. Watch, watch Kevin Rice jump here. Unbelievable. Ooh. And Weisinger got the shot over the top, and he's going to need clearance to land. Wow. 234. This game is on the table. 51 47, Chicago Marshall in white, the lead in the ball. Gloria Central trying to turn it over. Ooh. Williams tried to pick up a charge. 223. Nervous assembly hall. Mixon's in the lane. He's, free. The He's open and he got it in. And that's a big 21 points for Mixon. Six points advantage now for Marshall. Central must hurry. 209. Inside. Lamont Hansen went to the left hand. Boy exchanged hands beautifully on that. Eight for Lamont. Two minutes left. Marshall by four. The Lions looking for a turnover. Marshall looking to control it. Mixon again. Good again. Mixon in the clutch delivered. 23, and he's the player of the game for Marshall. He had that look in his eye. Stone turns to the hoop, puts it up and in. And Central answers on offense. 138, four-point difference. This is the critical possession. Here's a whistle and a foul on Tim Williams. He fouled Michael Doughty. There's Tim. 132 left. Marshall by four points. Probably not the foul that Coach Fisher wanted in this kind of a situation because the game's, the tempo right now is favoring Central. To put him at the line as well as they're shooting free throws and the great intensity that we alluded to, uh, I think is probably not the thing they want to do. Michael Doughty, a 73% foul shooter, just knocked in two moments ago. Not a lot of arch, but nothing but net. All net, great concentration. Now Marshall with 132 by five. He will that one in. Now the Lions are really looking down the barrel. Weisinger. 
Harvey's outside. Weisinger fires it up. Go! Oh. What a shot! 57 53 with 115. 18 for Weisinger. And he was almost out of the building. I couldn't even see him. In any one of the college leagues, that would have been a three point play. There's a long pass to Mixon, and he's just been Mr. Everything. He's got the ball. 105 to play in the game. Marshall by four. Steal by Weisinger. Foul by Weisinger. Bonus coming again. Tony's trying everything he can to get to rally his team back into the uh, a two point situation, which could develop here if they miss on the front end of the one and one. Three fouls on Weisinger. Insignificant at 102, unless we have OT. Very important free throws. It's Dowdy again. He's delivered four in a row. Missed it. Well, Lamont Hansen was fouled on the rebound, and we're going to go to the other end. Foul is on Rice. A big turnaround there. Well, here again, we're looking at a critical four-point exchange potentially with taking away the two free throws here and fouling down here under your own basket with uh, the... Here we see the bad roll that the ball took as far as Central is concerned. Of course, the foul that occurred, it probably was uh, the kind of thing that uh, shouldn't have happened here. 101 to play. For Rice Mark. has uh, four fouls now, Frank. That could be pivotal. If he and Stiffen are both riding with four. Hansen missed it. Out of bounds to Central. Hansen missed the front end of a one and bonus. And Marshall holds a four point lead, and there's 59 seconds left. We still have a full fat minute to go here. Central looks for a score. Harvey it's gonna go inside Harvey shoots and he missed the works stone rebounds and scores two-point game 50 seconds stone has 18 here comes Marshall Upshaw in the middle to stiffen four corners 40 seconds Marshall by two Dowdy is double dribble the ball to the Lions double dribble 36 seconds the benches are in a frenzy on both sides. 36 seconds, you see the clock. There it was in your corner, and now the score. What a basketball game. Only one will go to the title game, and one will be heartbroken, and Stephen is fouled out. Stephen is gone. Country Companies Insurance and the nearly 1,000 country companies agents in Illinois are happy to be co-sponsoring these outstanding basketball telecasts, and we hope you're enjoying our presentation. Don't forget, we'll have the girls' title games next week. Stiffen has fouled out at Assembly Hall with 29 seconds to go, and his team ahead by two. And there is a great athlete. See, it's important to see who's shooting the free throws. Tim Williams, I believe. Williams is the, going to be the shooter. He's a 52. For, there goes Stephen out. To a well-deserved ovation. For sure. One of the great athletes in the state. Kofer is in. And now there'll be a timeout with 29 seconds. And there's your scoreboard clock and the score. And we'll be back. One of your network sponsors is DeKalb Pfizer Genetics. It comes down to this. 29 seconds. Marshall leading by two. Peoria Central going to the foul line. Going there. Senior Tim Williams, 24. His season's average at the foul line, 52%. He's made his only attempt in the game. What could be critical here, too, is the rebound. He made the first one, and the game is one point different. A test of the central nervous system. Particularly right now, if in the event of a missed shot. A one point lead for Marshall and the ball. 26 seconds. The Commandos trying to hold off the charging Peoria High Lions. 
19 seconds. One point game. Whistle, offensive foul, Nixon. The Lions have a chance to win the game. The foul is on Mixon. You see Luther Bedford, who is stunned. And the Lions turn it over. I don't know what more we can ask for in terms of excitement. It's all here, and the script is here. 16. Marshall by one, but Central has the ball. 12. A box and one right now. They've gone right. to a box and one, and, and uh, of course, Weisinger is being shadowed on the box and one, and he wants the ball. He's got this it. Could boil down to an offensive rebound right Will now. Will you shot it in and once? The game is over. Central wins. Central wins 58 57. William shot it in at the gun. I don't believe it. Final score in an astonishing game. Peoria High Lions 58. The Great Commandos of Marshall 57. One of your network sponsors. <laughs> Let's hang on and let. Can we take a look just for a second at that last shot? Let's take a look at the winning shot. One of the shot. most uh, dramatic shots you'll see in state tournament competition. Very reminiscent of, of course, the uh, Laird Smith situation with uh, uh, Morgan Park. But this one, of course, takes Peoria Central into the title game. The shot occurred with one second, as we can see on the clock, and uh, pandemonium as a result. One of your network sponsors is John Deere. All right. <clears throat> All you ever wanted in a game and more as Peoria Central miraculously pulls out a victory over Chicago Marshall at the final buzzer there were two plays that were really critical at the end one's a charging foul here coach here we see a charging foul that was drawn by the by peoria central he did what he had to do and of course uh, the collision occurred the official was right on the call made the call that he had to make that then gave of course the lions the ball back which turned the ball over of course and we're looking at one of the great dramatic moments of state tournament competition at least from central's point of view for sure and uh, Williams vindicated himself on the missed second free throw earlier in a great fashion, a rather dramatic. I call this a thumper. <laughs> Absolutely heart-stopping game. And let's take a look now at the individual scoring for the losing commandos of Marshall Mixon with a magnificent 23-point effort. Stiffen with 10, Dowdy with 14, Upshaw with 8, and Martin Kofer with 2. But Mixon with a great game, 23. For the Lions of Central Good Balance, led by Stones, 18, with Weisinger, 18, outside. Williams, Timmy Williams, 14, and the one that won the game. And Lamont Hanson has number 8. And we'll take a breather and listen to the Decatur MacArthur General Band entertain you at this semifinal championship.
game is over. A 58-57 win for Peoria Central over Chicago Marshall. Take a look at the final stats on the contest. Uh, just wound down uh, field goal shooting. Marshall hit on 23 of 36, 63 percent. Peoria Central had one more bucket. They were 24 of 51, 47 percent at the free throw line. The Commandos 11 of 15, 73 percent. Central 10 of 15 for 66. Rebounding and boys surprising the smaller Lions with a substantial 27 to 19 edge on the boards over Marshall. Turnovers, the Commandos turned it over 18 times and Central 13 times. So there's your rundown on the team statistics on uh, this particular ball game, the upper bracket semifinal, Peoria Central now in the championship game tonight. And with some more information for you, an interview, let's turn you down to the end of the floor here at the Assembly Hall and Frank Bassoni. Thank you very much, Arthur. And we're standing here with one of the great coaches in Illinois history. He's won over 500 basketball games. Uh, Lee Kabuti, now of Champaign Central, also the AD there. Lee, welcome. And what, what a tournament we're having. Terrific, Frank. Just terrific. Tell us uh, how, how you saw this this last game we just had, this heart-stopping one-pointer. Uh, Do you have uh, a good view at, uh, at the close of the game? You know, I kept thinking Marshall would uh, beat them. Uh, they're both so quick. I think they're two of the uh, fastest teams that uh, I've ever seen in a state tournament. It just amazes me uh, how these big kids can move like uh, guards did about 15 years ago. But uh, uh, they're just, I think if those two teams played uh, 10 times, uh, one of them would win five and the other would win five. It sure looks that way. Coach, you of course have coached at Heron uh, before coaching at Ch Champaign Central. And with 500 victories, you've been involved in a lot of basketball and a lot of talent. How has the game changed and how have the players changed over your career? Well, you know, uh, years ago, you could take some big kids and uh, you could hide them. You could run some kind of offense and uh, possibly not keep them in so involved. You could play some defenses and hide the big guy. But the amazing speed of the kids today, the uh, you never used to never have any full court pressure of any type, but the pressure that they can apply for 32 minutes is just amazing. And uh, while it's the way the big kids move uh, all the way from professional basketball down through high school, uh, uh, the quickness is just uh, so amazing. Speaking of big kids with quickness, Thornton and Lanfear are the two teams coming up in our last semifinal game. How do you see that? Well, you know, we're in Central Illinois. We kind of got a pull for Lanfear. But uh, again, uh, two well-coached and uh, well-talented teams. Uh, it's too bad this place is not overflowing with people because uh, I think this afternoon and tonight, they're going to see some of the best ball games that we've had in the state tournament for a long time. One final question. After all these years, do you retain your enthusiasm for the game and coaching these youngsters? I really do, uh, Frank. I uh, am also the athletic director. I. Uh, I teach three phys ed classes. I'm the policeman at cafeteria at noon hour, and then I work in the summer in a music camp where I'm in charge. I like kids, and uh, this 35 years for me. I'm going to have to hang it up one of these days, and uh, it bothers me. I'm not ready to quit yet. Uh, we're not ready to have you quit, Lee Kabuti, and come by and see us often. Thank you very much, Frank. Lee Kabuti of Champaign Central. Now let's go back to the table to Art Kimball. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you, Frank. One of our favorite people, Lee Kabuti, the basketball coach and athletic director at Champaign Central. Upcoming, we have the Lions of Springfield Landfair and the Wildcats from uh, Thornton of Harvey. And we have highlights from the semifinal play last night. Thornton beat Lyle Bennett by a margin of 56-43. And uh, there you see Tyrone uh, Bigpen with a quick jumper. You're going to see him come back with a 15-footer from the side. And that made it 6-4 Thornton. Eric Coleman, one of the very fine guards for the uh, Wildcats, will hit an 18-foot jumper out of the corner. And Tyrone Bigpen, their superstar, will come back here. Pulls it up with a jump shot off the glass and in to make it 10-6 at that point in the first quarter in favor of Fort. Eric Coleman's going to hit that 18-foot bomb straight away to make it an 18-10 ball game, an eight-point lead for Thornton against Bennett. And then a tip-in by Eric Coleman makes it 20-10 in favor of the uh, Wildcats. Darren Guest, the big guy on the inside at 6-8, scores to make it 22-12. And then you're going to see Guest with a stuff shot, uh, shot coming up here very shortly. Here he goes. The big guy powers in 28-14 at that point. Thornton and Jeffrey Thurman's going to score underneath at the... Uh, into the first half of that ball game. He goes in, banks it in to make it 30 to 14. That was the way it stood at halftime. Then in the second half,
John Theus, the fine player from Bennett Academy, lit things up. He had 25 points last night. There's a 20-foot jumper. Pulled his club with an 11 at 35 to 24. Theus was going to come back in the fourth quarter. Another long-range bomb to make it 41-34. Pull the uh, Red Wings back within seven. And then there's Bayes. Watch this bank shot. Pulled his club within eight at 48 to 40. But the final score was Thornton of Harvey 56 and uh, Bennett 43. That was in the semifinal game involving the Thornton Wildcats. In the contest involving uh, Bob Nika's Springfield Landfair Ball Club last night in the semifinals, they were a 55-47 winner over defending state champion East St. Louis Lincoln. Bob Nika's son Moose, an 18-foot jumper from the corner. First point of the ball game, first bucket, 2-0 Landfair. Here you see Kevin Gamble from the left baseline, fine outside shooter at 6-7. Antonio Rose, who played brilliantly for East St. Louis Lincoln, drills in a 19-foot jumper baseline right. It was 12-11, Landfair at the quarter. Second quarter action, Antonio Rose from 19 feet to make it 13-12 as East St. Louis Lincoln took the lead. Here's Antonio Rhodes coming down on the fast break. Actually, Rhodes had the tip in. The shot was missed. Rhodes had the tip in at halftime. Lincoln led Landfair 25-19. Second half, there's Moose Nika in the third quarter with an 18-foot jumper, 25-21 Lincoln. Kevin Gamble, baseline, watched the big guy go up, and he nets it, 25-23 ball game. Lincoln by two. Antonio Rhodes will hit that uh, jump shot for East St. Louis Lincoln for the Tigers' squish. That made it 27-23. Still East St. Louis leading. Kevin Gamble comes back. A 29-27 lead still to Lincoln as Gamble hit the 15-footer. Now Kevin Gamble can have a follow-up effort. He did everything for a while. He banks it in. That tied the game at 34 with 117 to go in the third quarter. Calvin Pfeiffer, all-state guard for East St. Louis Lincoln off the baseline. 38-36 in favor of Lincoln at the quarter. Final period. Here's Leslie Lee with a follow-up shot. What a ball game he had to tie it at 38. You're going to see Moose Nika now later in the quarter. Give the lead to Lanfear by three at 43 to 40 with the jump shot. And Kevin Gamble is going to come down. Makes it 47-45 as he powers one up inside. The game ended Lanfear 55 and Lincoln 47. Those are highlights of the semifinal ball games. And now let's take you right on the floor here in the assembly hall to Frank Bassoni. Oh, thank you very much. Sam Camilli has joined us, the head coach of the uh, Harvey Thornton Wildcats. And Sam, I have to start by saying your team played terrifically well yesterday. You must feel very good about that. No question about it. The kids have done an outstanding job. They did an outstanding job yesterday, and they've really done an outstanding job all year. We're just so, so happy to be here that it's unbelievable. Well, you know, uh, I think the final four teams uh, in this tournament as we started our day today are four of the finest I've had a pleasure of watching in a long, long time. Thank you very much. I, I, I think there's no question about it. I just hope, and I mean this sincerely, I just hope we're capable of playing with them, that's all. Now, see, I think the other coach probably feels the same way, and we'll find out because of the power that you have inside, and, and Guest uh, is, is really a force uh, physically, and Big Ten is just a, a man out there on the court. No question about it, but we're playing a outstanding basketball team coached by a wonderful gentleman you know he's we were at peaking together and uh we both ate a little crow there and we both came back awfully humble and uh it's just a privilege to play against them because it's going to be a, a good ball game of two outstanding teams against everybody else sam let me say congratulations 28 and 3 in your first year all the way here to the final four and all the best of luck to you hey, thank you very much Sam Camilli, and now we're going to ask Bob Nika to come in and join us here at the uh, center court, coach uh, of the Springfield Landfair Lions, and of course, the Final Four is uh, uh, one of the members, of course, is the Lions. Congratulations on being here again. Thank you very much. What did you think of that first uh, game, Heartstopper? Did you have a chance to watch the end? Uh, yeah, I seen the, the last shot there. It was exciting finish. Uh, congratulations, Fiore, and a tough loss for Marshall. Let's talk about uh, facing the uh, Harvey Thornton Wildcats. They've got a lot of strength and power. How does uh, how do you plan to handle that? Well, we're going to try to hit the boards with all five guys. There's no question about it. That's going to be the secret to the ball game. We're going to have to rebound with them, or we're going to be in trouble. Let's talk just for a second about how you think the tempo of the game will be. Well, I, we're going to try to go when we can, of course, slow it down when we, we can't go, and we hope it's just kind of a medium tempo game. What about uh, uh, individuals in the game? Is there anything anything you have to key on as far as uh, Thornton's concerned? Well, we have to be a conscious of guests on the boards, and we've got to be conscious of Thigpen when he gets the ball, so we'll try to match up accordingly. Congratulations on getting this far, and best of luck to you, Bob. Thank you very much. Bob Nika. And now one of your sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. Well, I don't know 
if we can top the first semifinal game for thrills. The 58-57 uh, Peoria Central win over Chicago Marshall. And this is a classic battle, a credit to both ball clubs. But we're going to uh, see if we can at least equalize it in the second ball game between the Lions of Springfield Landfair and uh, Thornton of Harvey. Both come in at 28-3. and three. You heard Frank talking with the coaches a moment ago. And uh, I note apprehension from both, and I can understand that. We have a couple of players we want to discuss a little bit, uh, Ron Nikovich. And uh, first, Darren Guest from uh, Thornton of Harvey, who uh, certainly impressed us all last night. A uh, very, very strong physical player. And uh, Guest is 6'8", a 220-pound junior. Now, what about Guest's contribution? He's got to be uh, a key factor, doesn't he? Certainly does. We can look to yesterday's 17 rebounds, 11 points, and four block shots. Uh, but I think more than that, we can look to for something that will never show up in the uh, statistical sheet, and that's the intimidation factor that he uh, is uh, presenting, and it's an ever-present thing. Because, that's Darren uh, we see on the screen right now, Ron, and as people yeah. can see, he's a very well-structured young man uh, at 6'8", 220. A ball player I know you really liked last night for Lanfear is Leslie Lee, who uh, really kind of turned things for the Lions in the fourth quarter of that very, very tough matchup they had last night with the Pending State champion, East St. Louis Lincoln. We say classically, of course, that one of the things one needs to do to attack a zone is to hit the outside shot, but better than that, Leslie Lee did the kinds of things that you really have to do, and that is to attack the seams of the zone, which he did so well and dished off, and of course, uh, provided the uh, probably the key assist of the ball game toward the end. Uh, in addition, uh, 10 points, 10 rebounds, three assists, what can one say? Landfair is a ball club, 63.2 offensive average, good defensive mark, 50.4. On the other hand, uh, certainly Thornton of Harvey has a very fine statistical outlook, uh, 60 and a half points a game offensively, and I don't have his defensive average, but that's uh, down around 50 points, so we have two ball clubs that can uh, certainly play the game both ways. It's going to be a zone or man-to-man -man battle or a mixture, run? No, it's going to be a zone battle all the way. What we're going to see as far as Thornton is concerned is a backcourt pressure defense after a score. Uh, they'll drop back into their 1-3-1 matchup. And Lansbury, of course, will zone in their three-out, two-in type fashion. All right, let's meet the two ball clubs to the voice of the Assembly Hall and Tom Trent. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let's meet the coaches and players involved in our second semifinal game of the afternoon. First for the Lions of Lanphier High School in Springfield with a record of 28 victories, three losses. The head coach of the Lions, Bob Nika. Number 10, Michael Craig. Number 11, Darren Kelly. Teen, Mark Allstott. Number 21, Mike Woolasick. Number 23, Ralph Matthews. Number 32, Clark Douglas. Number 35, Jerome Taylor. And now let's meet the starting lineup for the Lanphier Lions. At forward, a senior, 6'7", number 40, Kevin Gamble. Scored 17 last night, averaging 17.3. At forward, a senior, six feet tall, number 22, Les Lee. Ten points last night, one of the heroes in that victory. Starting at center for the Lions, a sophomore, six feet eight, number 24, Ed Horton. Only eight points last night, but averages 11.6 on the season. At guard, a junior, six five, number 30, Moose Nika. Premier outside shooter with a 14-point effort last night. And a guard for the Lions, a senior, 5'7", number 20, Clarence Brigady. He's the playmaker, Brigady averaging uh, 5.2 points a game. So that's your Lanfair ball club, the Lions coming in 28 and 3. And now let's meet the Wildcats of Thornton High School and Harvey with a record of 28 wins, 3 losses. The head coach of the Wildcats, Sam Camelli.
Number 11, Danny James. Number 14, Larry Hawkins. Number 21, Dwight Lovelace. Number 24, Jerome Thigpen.